really is just a couple of people making you bad for everybody else. Anyway, joining us right now are Bank Alay Thompson from the Michigan Chronicle and Bill Ross, president of the Booker T. Washington Business Association. Thank you both for being here. Bank Alay, I'm going to start with you, but before I'm going to read something that you wrote in a recent column here saying, uh, and this was pretty strong words, the police department should simply withdraw the proposal and come up with a more creative and effective way to address crime during these two events without giving us any flashbacks to the KGP and PW Bota areas, uh, eras. Of course, you're talking about the Soviets and South African apartheid. That's, that's a strong comparison. Well, it, it is. Uh, um, uh, Stephen, when you look at Detroit, let's look at the cultural reality of this city. Uh, in a majority black city, let's look at, uh, let's expand this conversation a bit to look at Baltimore, Ferguson, other cities that have exploded as a result of bad relationship with the police department. In those cities, they were majority African Americans. So what we're trying to do is prevent another Baltimore or prevent another Ferguson from taking place in Detroit. A four-day, what I call draconian curfew, is not the way you address uh, this issue of crime in this city. It is not public safety. I think you instill a sense of fear, and then this creates an atmosphere for the bad guys to now rein in. And more so, you know, we've been talking a lot about race in Detroit. We just came back from the Mackinac Policy Conference, where business leaders themselves, for the first time in a very rare way, said they're concerned about race and what is happening in Baltimore. So for the police department to now instill or institute or try to push for a, co a four-day curfew, which I think is draconian for black kids who are the majority here, I think really uh, makes this uh, almost, almost a racial powder keg. And this is not what Detroit needs. I think, uh, you know, people want to respect the police out of a, a sense of respect and their yeah. responsibilities in the city, not out of fear and unlimited power and intimidation. So I think this is not a good omen if we are talking about bridge, bridging the gap between police and communities, especially in the era of Ferguson, right, right. in Absolutely. the era of Baltimore. Bank LA, let's get Bill's comments on this. Now, Bill, I grew up in the city of Detroit, and I remember, for example, for the fireworks, if our parents didn't go with us, we had to stay at home. I remember going just a few times downtown to the fireworks. So how do you feel about this? Well, I think that the initial proposal by the chief, the intent uh, was good, but the implementation of the policy as submitted is not a great idea. First of all, one thing that I applaud Chief Craig for is when he talked about community policing and involvement of the community. On such a drastic change of policy, I think it would have been important to bring to the table before you unveiled your intent uh, community leavers, uh, members of the administration, the legislative branch, um, families, residents of Detroit, and just get an overall buy-in as to the concept and hear from them in terms of their suggestions as to what would be a plausible approach to dealing with the issue. Yeah, Bill, let me interrupt you there. He said the intent was good. I'm, I'm not sure Bank LA would agree with that. But, the well, but, it, but even if it has the best intention, Stephen, but here's the deal. You have a curfew. The question becomes, is it applicable to every other child who is driving into Detroit on the night of the river, river, war, river days and also the fireworks? So in, 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 they've not answered that question. So the question becomes, does this curfew actually lay the ground for discrimination against kids in Detroit, majority of whom are black? But that Bankale, is the but, argument here. But Bankale, aren't they talking about all kids? If you're not with an adult over 18 and you're downtown, after the curfew, you need to go find a guardian or a parent to be they with have you? Not, they have not defined what they meant by all kids. All kids in Detroit or all kids in the region attending the fireworks and the river days. Yeah, we Bill, have to is make that, a distinction. Is that, is that a fair enough assessment that it's not clear that we're talking about all kids or just the black kids from the city? Well, that, that's what I meant when I said the intent, but, the, but the, the rollout caused some difficulty because the clarity that Ben Calais talked about has not shown up yet. Right, right. And that comes, I believe, from a lack of overall involvement from residents, community leaders, uh, administration, legislative body, and even some of the youth. Let's and get them involved and get their perspective and their viewpoint as how this issue should be handled. All right, somebody's got to have a final word on this. Who do you think it should be, the mayor, the police chief, the residents? I think when you have an issue of this nature, uh, Carlin, uh, that, that really uh, has divisive implications, on the verge of sowing seeds of division in the city, you know, in an era where we're talking about where African Americans on this issue of Detroit's comeback, this is not a sign that Detroit is coming back. And the police department, which is a constitutional agency, should not be an appendix to an issue that divides this community but brings the people back. So I think right. it might be time for us to hear from the mayor. Bank Lake Thompson, we appreciate it. Bill Ross, thank you both for being here today. Thank you.